Hi, I'm Lenka and you're watching musicinmusic.com. Yeah, it did. Um, it definitely affected my creative output. Um, it also kind of changed uh, everything in life, really. And as a songwriter, I guess I just write about my experiences and um, what I'm going through for myself, but also because I want to share. Um, so, yeah, it did change. I, I really felt like I, I wanted to have some lullabies and that is very much a, a thing that happens when you have a baby. <laughs> I wanted some sleeping music and I wanted it for my baby as well but the, the themes that I was writing about are, are very much about becoming a parent and this sort of chapter of my life. It's ideally it's both, but it's probably closer to the lyric because the melody often changes when I sit down at the piano and finish the song. So I'd say the lyric is more important for me, um, but ideally it will be together. Like I'll get, often I'll just get one phrase and it's usually something from the chorus like the last line of the chorus or something like that or the first line of the chorus and then I'll make the rest of the song work around that. It was a, an advantage for me in a way being Australian because I was in America and I felt like it was nice to be something a little bit exotic rather than another LA singer-songwriter. An Australian in Australia however is quite hard. Um, I think that's the same for anyone. It's probably easier for me in Asia because I'm not from here. Like a, a Hong Kong artist trying to break into Hong Kong isn't as different as somebody else to get that sort of attention, to have people notice you and take a listen to the music. Um, but other than that, I don't know, not really. Um, it's nice to have the kind of personality that we Aussies have where we're just kind of like, ah, whatever, it'll be right, she'll be right, mate. You know, it does help in this stressful music world to have that um, demeanour. Well, this is sort of stripped down acoustic, no bass, no drums. We do sometimes tour like that as well because I still want there to be a good dynamic to the show and I want people to be able to dance a little bit. We have those beats playing because a lot of my Asian fans really want that upbeat, you know, energetic show. Um, but I still love the trumpet and it features in a lot of my songs. My father's a trumpet player. I grew up on old jazz, so I'll always love that instrument and I'll always want that melodic element. And I don't want it to be all synthesizers. I want there to be some acoustic or even symphonic instruments. I have actually been touring lately with violin and cello um, for something different. So I don't know, I just, I change it up. But I do get a bit bored with the piano, guitar, bass, drums. I think that's not as interesting to me. I want to play these, you know, harps and vibraphones and things that I have in my album. So the way that I <clears throat> manage to do that, to be practical, is with my little strap-on keyboard and I'm playing sounds from the computer, but they are vibraphones, marimbas, strings and harps. Well, you actually have to have a label to put out an album. So I didn't really realise this until I found myself with a collection of songs as an independent artist and my manager was like, you know, you need to have a, a label. And I didn't want to sign a worldwide deal with anybody because I'd done two albums on a worldwide deal and I felt 
that I had been freed from that and I was in control and I wanted to then do different deals with different territories. So Sony in Asia works really great for me. We have an awesome relationship and they've been amazing, but it's not the label for me in other countries. So I needed to keep that separation and control. So I'm the label and then it's licensed out, licensed out to different labels in different territories. It's also Sony in Germany. Well, do you know, I've actually just had a bad battle with that because I was in mainland China, I got a chest infection and I don't think it helped. <laughs> Beijing concert, I had no voice. It was like, ah, nothing, nothing. Trey, my guitarist, had to sing everything with me because there was just nothing coming out. It was terrible. Um, and you can hear it's still a little bit bad. I still have a cough. Um, hot water, that's what the doctors told me. Uh, instead of cold, never cold water. And I have this amazing tea from America called throat coat tea, which has got licorice root and fennel and all sorts of other herbs and it coats the throat and feels really nice. But as far as food goes, I, I mean, you know, this, it's, it's pretty restricted. You have to be quite careful. I don't eat very close to a show. I need to have two hours with no food before I play. Um, can't drink alcohol, can't have chocolate or anything bubbly or I don't know there's a lot that I sort of have to keep it um, okay some singers don't they don't care at all they smoke cigarettes and drink whiskey and they can sing fine like Adele she's got an amazing voice she smokes no uh -uh. why <laughs> no one no one in Australia smokes it's done nah nah I mean, a few people do, but you can't smoke indoors, you can't smoke anywhere near a building, you can't smoke at a bus stop, you can't smoke in a park, so it's not really worth it. Dialect. I try to be neutral. Um, I don't have a full-on Aussie accent when I sing. If I did, it would be like, I'm just a little girl lost in the moment. <laughs> um, but I don't want it to be American and I, I just sort of want it to be neutral. It's fine. I say can't instead of can't and I say heart instead of heart. But I don't know, I think that I just try to be natural about it. Definitely. It's been huge for me. Um, for example, the Windows commercial, um, that was a year after the album came out. They chose that song and my video to be in their commercial and it became a viral hit online in Hong Kong and in a lot of other countries. Um, it got me a new fan base from having a radio hit after the commercial in Russia, Turkey, India, um, Luxembourg, I don't know, like <laughs> China. I hadn't really had that much impact in some countries until the Microsoft commercial. So yeah, it's very powerful and I respect it a lot and I'm really, really grateful every time. If it's the right thing, you know, I don't say yes to everything, but if it's the right vehicle for a song, then I see it as, as powerful as radio and all that. I would say um, try to find something unique that you have to offer. Um, practice hard, 
get very good at it and then come up with a lot of content. Content, content, content. That's what they say in America. You've got to have a strong online presence. You've got to have something quirky and interesting that people will want to look at to get them interested in the music. Visual identity is important, not so much being pretty or sexy, but having a strong visual identity that helps people understand what you're trying to say.